Nine tickets are already punched in the Clarence World's Fastest Gamers Finals. One more will come out of this. The last round of qualifications from the R Racing Qualifiers. As we say hello and welcome to Interlagos, round number four or four, where it is really that tight. Four points separate David Accor and Frank Shawhorst heading into this week's worth of qualifications and anything can happen when you head yourself to brazil just ask timo glock ask lewis hamilton back in 2008 it's will Vinson along with jake sperry and paul smith we are here at interlagos um, round number four or four for world's fastest gamer shout out to isvan balau's track cam to gourmets andreas one and and one design at engineer.in and also Nick Fissum for racebot.tv live timing. So, this is where we are. The final of the four qualification rounds. Nine tickets are punched already here, Paul. One more driver gets to add themselves to the list. That could be David Accor. It could be Frank Shawhorse. If both of them take themselves out of this event, then it could be someone else. Yeah, you would say that realistically it's going to be between Decor and Shortos, but never rule anything out here at Interlagos. Anything can happen around this circuit. It's a fantastic venue, always an extreme challenge as well. And well, this, this series is all coming down to this. This is where we get to see who is the best one out of this world's fastest gamer event. And uh, all these three races that we've had so far have been fantastic to watch. Yeah, and Jake, I'd made a little joke there about Timo Glock, of course, back in 2008. But that's the thing about Intel Argos. It is a race when the impossible happens. It's a situation when things can go wrong. You go back to 2003, of course, in the wet. The fact that we had ourselves, Giancarlo Fisichetta, win the race, then not win the race, then win the race again a week later once in the stewards booth. And this is a track where, quite literally, Everything over the years has happened. It's a perfect finale for our qualifications. It is. It's the perfect finale for any series, in my opinion. That includes the likes of Sebastian Vettel in 2012, when he had to have that massive claw and fight back. You look at everything that's happened in actual motor racing and sim racing as well, and you look at Interlagos and you think just how beautiful the racing can be. I remember a race I did, the Gathering of Tweakers Samba Challenge this year. That came down to the final corner as well. If anything can come down to the final corner, this circuit will. And the difference between Shothorst and the Corpse, whoever finishes higher, they win. And that's all she wrote. Indeed so. And again, nine tickets have been punched already. They'll be joining a couple of iRaces, Jake, already in the mix. We know Gregor Hutu will be there. We know that Graham Carroll will be there. And again, you know, as an iRacer person through and through, to have 30% of the field comprised, at least, of iRacers, that's a proud moment. Especially you've got the fact that Bonner House is there as well. He was our factor. He's one of us now. Yeah, you can argue he's one of ours, but you talk about the likes of Isaac Price, Gregor Hutu, Bonner House. You can't ask for too much more in terms of that situation. And getting yourself one of these fabled seats it is always going to be very difficult. And whether you're a part of a team that's already got drivers there or not, I think everyone's dreamed at one stage of being a Formula One driver. Part of sim racing has been we haven't had the money to get there. So what we'll do is we'll try and get there through racing our hobby or something like that. I remember very vividly Oli Pakala raced with Valtteri Bottas in karting when he was very young. Of course, another red line driver. But you look at just what sim racing has done over this last year. You talk about the likes of the Visa Vegas E-Race. You talk about the likes of World's Fastest Gamer. And the amount that sim racing has come on just in the last 12 months has been simply staggering. And I think this is a great opportunity for these drivers, for the two up top, and maybe someone like Jamie Fluke if they come together to go and steal the world's fastest game seat because they don't come along very often at all. Yeah, indeed. So, and Paul, again, the lines between pure sim racing and esports continue to merge. Formula One, of course, they have their own esports championship taking place 
over the course of the next few weeks. But for this opportunity, a driver, a sim racing seat, working in the simulator for McLaren, a team with all of that pedigree. I mean, literally the likes to work alongside Fernando Alonso. You can't get much better than that in terms of a CV. No, absolutely. Yeah. You look at the pedigree of drivers that have gone through the gates there at McLaren and it's just a who's who of motorsport and uh, certainly getting to work alongside those people of Alfonso Alonso, Stoffel van Dorn, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. Lando Norris, of course, who we see on iRacing yep. as well. He's involved with McLaren through their young driver program. You know, he's involved with things like this. So. It's definitely a huge opportunity for one of these 10 people to go on to it. And uh, well, we'll get to find out that 10th uh, person tonight, but um, I'm, I'm absolutely good. I'm not good enough to, to compete in this, to be honest. <laughs> hey, those that can't do teach, those that can't race commentate, right? We talk about that one all the time. But Jake, again, we flip back to 2008 and Lewis Hamilton winning the world championship in the final corner of the season. But again, it's not just Lewis Hamilton that does the work. It's not just Fernando Alonso that does the work in a team. It is the guys behind the scenes. When we talk about really actually putting something forward towards a Formula One racing team, this really does highlight the fact that the work done in the simulator, as well as the wind tunnel, will translate into how good these guys are when they are on the actual racetrack. Exactly, and it goes down to such a point that you see so many drivers decide to use this Nicky team, Benny Simonson. You talk about drivers like Rubens Barrichello and Robert Kubica that you often see dotted about on servers here and there here in iRacing. And it's these sorts of drivers, the likes of Frank Biella, that you all try and aspire to and be like and hopefully you get to be in that situation Mitchell de Jong another one and Mitchell de Jong the prime example will because here's a driver who can race at the very very top of sim racing and go off and do rally cross and be very very good there as well you can't ask too much more about how much real world connotation sim racing has had and how many drivers have come in from many different series it even goes down to the point of the NASCAR Pro Invitational that we've seen on a Tuesday night I, yeah. I've got to say, can I can I just add there as well? You know, there are people who've won championships who absolutely say that using services like iRacing helps keep their racing edge, helps keep them in practice, even though they're not out on track in the, their actual car. Being involved in races like this on iRacing really helps keep their edge, and it's won people championships throughout the world. Indeed, so and you consider the likes of a lot of the IndyCar drivers on their off season they take part in a league sanctioned by both IndyCar and also by iRacing. So I'm having a Theresa May moment. Give me one moment. But when you actually think about that, you think about the fact that, you know, Will Power, who is a multi-time IndyCar champion, he has been on iRacing. I'm sure if we look through the archives long enough, we might have seen Fernando Alonso when he's preparing for his Indy 500 campaign on iRacing. You see what they have on NBC with NASCAR. That sort of stuff. Sim racing is a big deal and it's only going to get better. But the question I want to ask you now, Jake, is quite simply this. Who is going to win today? David Decor or Freight Shawhorst? Neither. But I think the corpse is going away with the world's fastest gamer seat. Okay. Paul? Uh, I'm going to say his lightning starts and being able to get him up front. David Decor will take the win today and take the world's fastest gamer title. Does desperation come into it though, Jake? You say neither. Do you think desperation will come in if we're on, I don't know, lap 20 of this event and there's a half and half manoeuvre for one position? Will Freaks your horse or will David Accor try and make that 50-50 move to try and get themselves enough points? And what are the voices in their ears saying to them? Well, I think there's going to be an element of drivers trying to make that magic moment and you know everyone sees their name in lights when you see a 50 50 move and you go for it but every time you you race a race anywhere you are rolling a dice on a move you are hoping that you hit a six and the move is good but sometimes you can roll a five and an incident occurs and there's not much you can really do about it i, I think that the moves will happen the 50 50 moves will happen i think it's going to be as cut and dry as we are going to see track limits used to the absolute limits, the vehicles almost as weapons at times. I think that if it comes right down to it, I, I think there's no holding back. You don't get another opportunity like this again. 
Well, we are going to head ourselves over to qualifying coverage in just one moment's time. But if you missed anything from last week, it's okay. We got you covered. Here's a recap from round number three. <laughs> Fantastic start there by the 07 machine as they head themselves to turn number one. What's the story, Jake? Jonjic around, and it's a big, big instant at turn numbers one and two. The variant director feel it. He tried to go through. There was contact behind, actually, involving Michael Partington, of all people, turning Jan von der Heide around, and there was always going to be a bit of contact. Jonjic was up on two wheels at one stage. So it's Schotels versus Fluke for position number two and damage limitation. Look at Kazuki Gun, though. Kazuki Umashima tucked right underneath with Ilka Harpala just in front, and he goes to the inside of all places, makes it work. Thank you very much. Very much. Radicals online driver through. Hapla under pressure as well. Now behind from Partington. It's five to go here at Autodromo Nazionale Monza. And now Frank Schotos senses a little bit of urgency. Closes that gap right back down again to just a couple of tenths of a second as they head through the Variante de Retofilio. And again, he's just hoping to get some form of opportunity between now and the end of this event. But he could oh my pass. goodness, there's a car around. That's Hapla. Oh, that's going to be big in terms of the overall championship, but Ilka Hapala has gone down at the first chicane here today. Replay coming up for you right now. And it's two bits of contact, Will, between himself and Partington. A contact on the rear, unsettling Harpler as he was getting out of the Variante Director Filio. A second contact the other side turns him around. And, and look at Shothos out of the Della Roja. He was fighting that vehicle all the way to keep control of it. He is starting to have a little bit of a struggle now on those tyres. Those rears are starting to fall away a little bit. And now Jamie Fluke understands that and just needs to stay within about three to four tenths of a second as they head through the Variante Ascari. Fluke, nowhere near close enough back. It'll be a case of the David Accor show wins here at Monza. David Accor, a Ryan race team will win.
Have you switched off training pants? Welcome up above. Welcome to the highest altitude race in the Formula One calendar. And welcome to Interlagos for round number 4-4 four, four of iRacing, McLaren, world's fastest gamer. So far, nine drivers have punched their ticket to the finals. One more needs to do so, and that will take place over the course of the next 45 minutes. We've got two contenders, Davide Core and Frank Shawhorse, Qualifying is going on as we speak. It's Will Vinson, Jake Sperry, and Paul Smith here on Racebot TV. We are streaming live on iRacing Live as we are going right now in Sao Paulo, Brazil. This track measures a total of 2.6 miles worth in length. The fastest lap set at this racetrack by Graham Carroll. 1 minute 9.635. You might remember him. He won the Vegas e -pre race. So qualifying's underway. Drivers are doing laps as we speak. And Freight Shawhorse with the early advantage there, Paul, over David Accor. Yeah, three and a half tenths of a second. So that's a good banker there for him. They've got plenty of time to put in another lap if they want to. Uh, other drivers out there, Alex Sadler, who we normally see on uh, race, but race day in the Formula Renaults, he's out there as well, third at the moment. But you look at the drivers, Moritz Lerner, uh, Joshua Rogers is competing today, which is uh, nice to see. He's going to throw a spanner in the work. Kazuki Yamashima as well, he's out qualifying as well. So plenty of names that we uh, we know here and love to see uh, in this Formula One car. Michael, pa Michael Patton just going third now in qualifying. Yeah, and we'll show you a look at the um, overall point standings in just one second. We're just letting some of these guys get out and get their laps done because qualifying laps here, Jake, they don't take that long. So we expect qualifying to really be done in the next two to three minutes time. Freight Shawhorse on his second lap. Govan Keeney up into P number five in the 18 machine. David Accor also on a lap right now. Yeah, David Accor needs a good lap. He's four tenths back and I think that when it comes to what he needs to do, he's got to get this lap time perfect. If he hasn't finished this lap, then I think it's going to be game over for him. He'll have to start from second. Show thoughts, 110.4, four tenths clear at pole position. It doesn't mean much at the moment if they're both on the front row. I back the corpse any day off the line. But this is the sort of thing that you're looking at here, Will. Drivers you don't normally expect up the top. Alex Sadler, the new recruit for Radicals Online. Go Vankini, the most controversial man in sim racing today. It's no lap from the corpse. He will start at best position number two overall when it comes right down to it. Josh Rogers now on the drive to the line, and we'll see what he can do. Yeah, indeed. I think that David Accor might have one more lap to go. We are on board with Frank Shawhorse. Let's have, oh no, he's not going to be on board. He messed up in sector number one. Let's go over then to the driver of David Accor. He exits. Well, this is the exit of he's turn number five to take it to Lego. I think he's got one more. I'm not going to lie. I think that he laps. has got one more. We'll and have a look. Two, he's got two laps to set and he's used both of those laps. Well, he's on his third lap right now as it's been classed. So he's just putting in practice right now, I think. I think he doesn't have any more laps. Umashima's come across the line. He's going to be starting his flying lap here as well. He's not set a lap time at the moment. He's the only car not to have set a lap time here either. So, uh, yeah, it, pressure is on now for Kazuki. Yeah, Kazuki Umashima, he is a driver who will have to make waves happen over the course of the next two and a half minutes here in this qualification session. There is a look on board with David Accor just for the record. Let's see what happens to him. He's actually, you're right, he's actually just starting a lap for some reason. So we'll have a look into that one. Let's actually have a look then at the overall standings heading into this event. And it is David Accor who leads by four points over Freak Shawhorse here, um, Jake. 
David Corr with 826 points, Frank Shawhorse 822, Jamie Fluke with 690. I mean, quite realistically, Jamie Fluke and Michael Partington are almost out of the running. It would take a miracle for them now to get themselves anywhere near the top of this championship leaderboard. And Jamie Fluke not racing, so he will not get to the top of the board. It's about Partington. Umashima over the line. 111, 589. Fifth row, Kazuki Umashima. My goodness, this field looks strong here today. It does. And Umashima only down in P number nine here today. He is struggling, one would argue. There are times when he's been better, of course. He almost won a round of the IRAC World Championship Grand Prix Series. We have a look on board with David Accor then on what we think might well be just a random lap. But we'll have a Richard look Arnaud. for the sake of it. Richard I know as well. He's moving yeah, himself up through the field. Yeah, he's he's going for what he's on his final lap here, going across the line and he does not set a lap time. So Oof. crucially he's signed down in sixteenth place. That's big there for Richard Ardo. He's struggling as a consequence of that one. 51 seconds and remaining in qualifications. Pretty much everyone now has set their lap time. So let's have a look at your starting grid for this event. Frank Shawhorse will get himself the advantage and get himself pole position here today as he will put himself to the top of the timing stand. David Accor, three and a half tenths of a second back. But we know that Freight Shawhorse and Team Redline have struggled on race start in this series. Ilka Hapala in third place. And Michael Partington in the fourth position. Fifth place will go to Zoran Zonik there in the number seven. Central Eastern Europe car. Alex Adler in sixth place. Govan Keeney in seventh. Joshua Rogers in eighth. Ninth place will go to Kazuki Umishima. And then Moritz Lona rounds out your top 10. Kyle Germanton then in 11th position. Van Kern in 12th place with Stefan Schmidt, Joshua Thompson, and Aaron Chalman rounding out your top 15. There is the remainder of your 20 car field up on your screen. Jake, it's a packed one. It's a pack one, it's a strong field, and it's going to be all you want. 24 laps of an event here as well. And with three of the top five being Orion machines, including Decorps, Jothos knows that he is fighting up against the Wolves here today as the Lone Wolf. Paul, final thoughts before we go green. I think this is all going to be about the start and the first couple of laps in this race. If David Decor can get his customary cracking starts from the line here i think he can get out in front in towards that center s and if he's able to pull a little bit of a gap there in the early stages freight shots us will struggle to catch up with him we are waiting then for the drivers to head themselves down to the signing grid for this the final round of our qualification event drivers now just starting slowly to head themselves down to the starting grid there is a look at the driver of david Accor. Qualifying time, 112.817. He's on the grid. We're waiting for the others to come and join him right now. 24 laps is what we'll be doing here today. The grid is almost set. We are almost ready to go racing for the final time here in McLaren's World's Fastest Gamer on iRacing, presented by RaceBot TV. The drivers are almost now set. They're ready to go racing. 24 laps, two drivers, one shot at making the finals. Who's it gonna be? Lights out. Here we go, and again, another fantastic start by David Accor in towards turn number one. He's done it before, he's done it again. David Accor to the early race lead ahead of Frank Shawhorse. We knew this may well have been the case, and indeed it is. David Accor takes the early advantage, and behind them, they are all squabbling for positions. But look at this, Frank Shawhorse coming back down and towards turn number four. They are side by side as they work themselves through turn four and five, and Frank Shawhorse will oh. get that position back, Paul. Big crash here, Joshua Rogers, Fennett Kern, uh, Richard Arnaud, all involved in that down at Descended del Lago. So let's get a replay of that one. Frank Shawhorse does lead the way. David Accor got the better start. But we have a big crash upside down and around. 
goes the driver of Joshua Rogers on his lid there for the moment. But he is one of a number of drivers involved. We'll give you updates. We've got more drivers involved in the incident. Govankini is one of them. We see him there struggling, going slowly right now in the number 18 machine. But Frank Shawhorse will lead the way past the start and finish line for lap number one. I tell you one thing, Jake. He didn't get the good start, but he did rebound spectacularly. Yeah, it was fantastic from Freak Shothorse. He knew that if he got a good run through this corner, turn number two, that he would get the good run out of the Curva de Sol and the run to the Desquila de Lago, he would certainly get correct. Now, he's just got to stay in a good position. He would ideally want to break a second, but the corpse is not letting him do that. And there's two DRS zones at this circuit. One down to Desquila de Lago, one up towards turn number one in the center S. And that's crucial. Shothorse needs a very good middle part of the section where I feel that his vehicle is going to be strongest compared to the corpse. Yeah, already, by the way, the top two drivers have pulled out a 2.1 second advantage over El Cajapala. So really, already, it is your two championship contenders who are going at it. And this is exactly what we want to see here, Paul. A bit of a sloppy run there down towards Miguelo, in towards Yunkao for the driver of David Accor in that dirty air. Seems, seems like oh. the Team Redline car goes better at that part of the racetrack. What you got? Uh, Joshua Rogers, Stefan and Schmidt as well have had an incident. They've come together as well. And oh, it's, it, it's just not going well for Joshua Rogers at all. In fact, it was uh, one of the uh, RC cars, Richard Arnaud, who caused that one. Yeah, Stefan Schmidt started off by hitting the outside tyre barrier very hard. Joshua Rogers involved in that one as well. So, a couple of beats and bangs at the start of this motor race. But out front, they are your top two. Behind, worth noting, there are big gaps, Jake, really, behind all of these drivers. DRS, of course, will be enabled on this lap. We see one or two drivers using that already, including number seven machine over Govankini. Yeah, and that's Zoran Jonjic there trying to make that move, unable to make it happen on the most controversial man in sim racing today. And Jonjic will be hoping to find a way through, not up here, the horseshoe, that right of Ferradura, and then into the right and then the left now of what is going to be the Pinarino, the Beacon de Pato, just straight after that. So this battle in the middle of the pack, Keeney, he's had a sabbatical for a year, come back, trying to find that form again, always difficult when things like that happen, but we've also got battles like Sadler versus Partington that will be taking place. And also, you talk about that race lead, and Schothorst, even with DRS, still pulls out another tenth and a half on that last lap. He's trying desperately to break a second. Yeah, David Decor, we can have a look at the lap time is there for you, and you see he's losing time every single lap. He lost three tenths of a second on lap number one, three tenths of a second on lap number two. He lost a tenth of a second on lap number three. David Decor really seems to struggle in this middle sector here, Paul, because sector number one and three, we expect him to have that DRS lap wide open. We know a Ryan race team can make the DRS and the ERS work together, but Frank Shawhorst seems to be fantastic for that middle sector as we've got a car around. That is a driver of the number 17 machine, David Porcelli, and he's had a moment down in turn number four. Yeah, with Govan Keeney, and Govan is struggling to get his car back as well. He's got a lot of damage to that car. Not been the day for Govan here. Uh, it seems to be that I seem to be the one that always gets all the trouble uh, to report on here today. Uh, Mikhail Lemaru running a bit wide there, and uh, Zoran Jonjic has made it through on him, so that's a change of position for them. But really, that front battle, Frick Shotost, he, you know, there's still that DRS zone, and it's only what one hundredth of a second difference in lap time. So David Ocar has responded to that a little bit. Track conditions, we've not really talked about it. It's quite a hot track here today. So 104 degrees Fahrenheit, it's up in the 30s in uh, Celsius, but definitely. It's, all, it's going to be a little bit of tyre management going on here. Maybe not, you know, try not to get too much heat into those tyres. In fact, David Decor, great run down towards Descent de Lago. He's caught up is now within six tenths now. Caught up a tenth of a second there. Yeah, and Alex Sadler as well is putting pressure on Michael Partington. We have got side by side behind Josh Thompson then going at it with the driver on Moritz Lerner. And it looks as though Moritz Lerner is going to get that position to move that driver up one place and move Josh Thompson down into P number eight for the time being. 
So Josh Thompson now down into eighth place. Lona up into seventh place. Aurelian Tolman is also there in that battle. And he's currently scored in the ninth place there in that number 10 car as they head themselves down into Yun Shao for the fifth time in this event, Jake. Yes, they do. Well, Ori and Talmod hoping to get past Josh Thompson and get past very quickly. We know how good Ori and Talmon can be inside of a Formula Renault, but he has DRS. He has the opportunity now to close that gap. Two tenths, one tenths on the brakes late into turn one. Little bit of a wiggle. Side by side, they stay into the center S and hopefully he can make it around the outside. He does make it around the outside. Great move on Josh Thompson, but Thompson now not over and done with. There we are. We saw an incident between these two drivers. Alley and Talmon hard into the barriers. Replay there for you on board with the driver of Alley and Talmon. But Paul, what a moment we have just had. Yeah, big, big moment there. And uh, I tell you what, that was just coming across to take his line a little bit too soon. Getting involved with Josh Thompson there. And that's pushed him and Thompson back down the order. So uh, drama, everybody's desperate in this one. It's almost as if it's, you know, it's an end of season feeling and away we go. It's uh, big, big moments like that. And uh, well, what can you say? It's causing a lot of drama as now uh, Talmon and uh, Van der Bosch are uh, battling away as well with Richard Arnaud who's trying to recover in this one. So been lots of drama in this one. That's Sadler still not able to catch up to Michael Partington and Lamoureux and uh, Germanton as well. They're battling away over ninth place now. All this, uh, all these action and these uh, incidents really mix things up on this track. But David Decor crucially, 1.2 seconds behind Shotos now. So he's lost the DRS range then. He's 1.1 second behind David Decor. I know that can be a blessing in disguise in some ways, Jake, because if it's the fact that he was just struggling that dirty air, being 1.1 seconds back, it would give him the opportunity to cool those tires down, just get some clean air over that front wing and hopefully just regroup himself. But he is struggling right now against Frank Shawhorse and that will come back, in my opinion, down. If we're going to talk about this at the end of the race, we'll come back down to that first couple of corners. Yes, David Accord got the better start, but Frank Shawhorse was absolutely perfect in his retaliation. That vehicle of David de Cortes looks like a dog right now, Will, because it is all over the place. It's understeery, it's oversteery, it's every sort of steery that you ever try and look at it. If you look up here, he heads through Ferradura, double right-hander. It was this corner where he lost the one-second window by missing the apex last time by. He's got it nice and neat this time, and if he really just strings a few bits of corners together, he may have that vehicle come back to him in the second half of this race when the tyres start going off. It is still quite early. We're still only one-third stick distance into this event. Just because it's outside of one second, don't count this one out yet. We've seen Frank Schothors make mistakes in the last two rounds, and that's a missed apex again from De Corps there at Jun Sao, and that's enough for him to lose probably another three tenths of a second. Yeah, the gap's up now to 1.4 seconds almost between David Accor and Frank Schothors. No DRS then for David Accor as they come past the start finish line. Interesting to know the straight line speeds are the same between these two drivers when they are in clean air. One thing worth thinking about later on, Alex Sadler versus Michael Partington. Sadler tries to go down the inside into the center S, not able to do so. He falls back behind, but he will have DRS enabled on the run down into the Sega de Lego. But the thing is, Paul, he just messed up that run for Curve de Sol, point blank, as also running Vunderbotch has lost a position to Josh Thompson. Oh, Sad Michael Partington, big, big moment there on the exit of Descender de Largo, heading up towards Ferradura now. So this is giving Sadler the opportunity, and Kazuki Mishima has just sat there patiently, waiting behind his teammate, and Sadler is absolutely all over the gearbox of Partington. Great racing, but as you say, Will, you want to maybe Ooh, not make the dive word. on the inside of turn one as there goes Sadler down the inside. Great forceful move, and here comes Kazuki. He's going to make it through as well. 
well. So that's great teamwork between the two of them. I'll shift him out the way and you come through. What a pass there for the driver of Alex Sadler. We saw it. We're going to have a look at it from our aerial coverage brought to you by And One Design in just one moment's time. There's one look there. You see the driver of Partington just being pushed wide in that Evolution Racing Team car, allowing Kazuki Umashima to go past. There is a look now from up above. You can just see that Sadler was behind, coming down into turn number eight. Forced himself down to the inside. The two almost make contact. Kazuki Umashima then able to work the outside line into Mugello. That's actually down at Bigger Depato. That um, incident moment happened even. No incident. It was just a big, bold pass there. We talked about big, bold passes here, Jake. Well, there's the first one of the day. Yeah, that's a fantastic move from Alex Sadler. He just found something that nobody else would have even dared to have tried to do. If you see a gap, sometimes you do have to go for it. And oh no, he's round. That Sadler turned around and we were talking about his praises. And he makes a spin off the exit of the Pinarino. Too greedy onto the power. And there's a reason why that he's going for the road to pro. He still has a ways to go, Will. Yeah, there is Sadler. Exit of Pinarino. We'll see it in a second just loops it around and it is off camber there Paul so you know it is one of those corners we have seen some of the best loop it around there the good thing for Sadler is he got back on track he only lost two positions he was working himself alongside at one point in fact he did keep seventh place in the end there staying ahead of Jonic ironically our cameras turned over to Jonic because he was involved for in a battle and again Alex Sadler's been around no I take that back no, I was going to say, um, Sadler, he, he, as you were saying, uh, Jake, you know, he, he's still, he's still developing, he's still learning, he's still getting the hang of this car, getting the hang of the setups that they get. You know, he's new to the Radicals team, and uh, well, certainly, he's given it a damn good go, that's for sure. But uh, really, you know, what he's got to worry about now is the heat that he's put into those rear tyres. Now, those rear tyres are going to take just a little bit just to calm down, get the cooling down a little bit, so he can then get back to, to speed to one he'll still be under pressure here from Zoran Jonjic as they're heading in towards uh, Bicca Tapato once again yeah I've been having a look at Owen Tolman as well because Tolman's involved in the battle with Michelle Lamarouk and the thing is what I've seen there Jake down towards turn number four the um, Lamarouk had the DRS enabled and Tolman didn't because of when that pass happened and the DRS activation zone and that means that number 11 car is furious right now as he tries to make themselves back into the top 10. Exactly here, the car in position number 11, car number 10, Orion Talmon needs to get past Mikel Lamoureux as quickly as he can. He'll have the DRS then down this very long straight then across the line and it's pretty much nose to tail, but it's going to be very easy for the real championship machine as it is going to be against the 15 and the 10, Frenchman versus Frenchman and behind that Frenchman as well, Richard Arnaud, team boss, wants to get through up into 11th position on his own accord as well. Good scrap going on here. Yeah, very, very good indeed. Joshua Rogers involved in a battle as well with David Porcelli. Let's get ourselves a replay of this one as well, side by side, heading themselves down in towards turn number one. Rogers on the outside cannot make the pass stick there. Almost loses the position in the corner of himself doing so. So three drivers there separated by pretty much nothing. Porcelli, Rogers, and Fernet Kern right now. Of course, many people, Paul, know Fernet Kern from the Irish Racing World Championship Grand Prix Series. Kern and Rogers almost coming together just there. Yeah, absolutely. These two are going at it absolutely hammer and tongs here. They've got, um, yeah, as I say, have got Kern behind as well. He's oh, just had a little bit of a mistake there as well from uh, Fernet Kern. Uh, so uh, that's just allowed Rogers to focus back again on uh, David Porcelli. But uh, yeah, these two, they've got damage, both of these cars. You can see they're banged up from uh, various incidents that have happened. It's been an incident filled first half of the race, but now the second half of the race, it's just calming down a little bit. I say that Alex Sadler and Zon Jonjic are still pretty close together as well. Uh, further up your field but Rogers is looking patient he's trying to get the run through turn two and three just a little wiggle there so the uh, the dirty air effect going through covered us all really affecting him there and he's going to struggle to get past into Descender de Lago yeah and there we are on board of Joniak right now as he battles it out with Alex Sandler ahead of them is the driver of Moritz Luna and a big lunge down to the inside there into Bigger de Pato by Joniak does not make the move work 
as he comes into Mugello. Tries to take as tight a line as possible. Set himself up, not to make the pass into Yun Sao, but to get the opportunity out of this corner, but fails to do so. Another big wiggle there by the number seven machine, Jake. Yeah, and Alex Sadler looking looking a little bit tentative, but Zoran Jonjic as well also starting to struggle also. So you can see the dirty air effect coming to play. Won't be having the move into turn numbers one and two, the center S, but will try and set up that run then into turn number four. The big issue, though, is Moritz Lohner, the Hoixing Velcro Motorsports driver just in front because he's acting as the buffer. But look at this. Jonjic with a very good run here, and Sadler saving ERS all the way down the straight had nothing in return to argue with so we move then the driver of Jonjic up into p number seven here's a replay from that for my aerial coverage brought to you by and one design this is through curva de sol and it seemed to be actually that driver sadler just got himself onto these curves on the exit of curva de sol there paul and that's what cost him the momentum and sector one is all about momentum here at interlagos yeah, that's it. As soon as you get over those curbs, the car just wants to bottom out and act like a, a boat almost. So you have to get out, the, get out of the gas a little bit just to try and recover that car. And that's what cost him that speed then all the way down towards Descendo de Lago. And that ended up costing him that position. So Zjoncic now up to seventh place in this race behind Moritz Luna in sixth place and uh, we've got battle yeah, this is the beautiful thing about this Interlagos track we've got battling all the way through the field I'm looking at Richard Arno at the moment trying his best to get past Mikel Lamoureux as they're heading down towards the center S once again he's got the DRS flap wide open looking to the inside Arno late on the brakes is we going to get the switch back here Lamoureux trying to get the run through turn number two that's what he wanted through the Curva de Sol now heading towards the centre of the Lago. He's going to have the DRS, but so too is Josh Thompson behind as well. They're all kicking, going left and right, but Arno makes that move stick. Yeah, so Lamoureux down in P number 12 right now. Arno up in the 11th position. Here's a look, by the way, at your moves and shakers in this event so far because we have seen a lot of moving and a lot of shaking going on. And actually, out of nowhere, Kazuki Umashima is up into P number four. He is your biggest mover in the field today, up five places. You've also got yourself Moritz Lona. He is up four spots inside your top ten. The driver of Alex Sadler, he is up two places. Up two, Down sorry. two. Down two, yeah, I take one back. Uh, it's actually the driver of um, Tolman, who is up five places. Up eight places, though. Mikel Lamoureux there. He is your biggest mover in your field so far, Jake. Yeah, Mikel Lamoureux from 19th to 11th. He's plus eight, and he has been flying, but he has been going backwards in the last couple of laps because Josh Thompson is waiting to try and make a move as well into turn number one. Not going to happen, but it's going to be Arnaud now who will be under pressure in the real championship machine as they round themselves through the uh, Curva de Sol, looking towards the left-handers then of the Desquita de Lago, and not close enough then this time is the driver of Mikel Lamoureux. He's looking, but will... You can only look so much before something happens and a move starts to get going. And I think for drivers up and down this field, at this stage of the event, when there's only eight laps to go, it's about consolidating. Oh, 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 Tolman. Yeah, Tolman's fun. And he's into oh. the barriers. Let's get a replay of that one for you. This is down at turn number six, Feridora. He loses it all by himself. A wicked crash there, Paul. Yeah, that car has just snapped on him. That was ugly, that. He will, he'll, he was not had any chance at hope in hell of getting that save, no matter how much runoff you have there. That's an uh, absolute tragedy for uh, for Talmon there, be uh, because that really, he was going well here today. And yeah, one little instant, one little slide, a snap of oversteer, and he's in the barriers. Let's go back, though, to your battle for the race lead. David Accor right now is in second place. He is now three seconds back from the overall race leader, that is Freight Shawhorse. And again, we thought maybe David Accor was saving some tyres, but actually, let's change the narrative right now because the Accor is all over the place down at turn number 11. Mugello again down at turn number 12 for Yun Sal there, Jake. He is not happy in that race car. He is holding on rather than trying to attack. 
exactly. And if he's not careful, he may have his own teammate, Ilka Harpala, come back into play. So for Davide Korps, you know, this is where it's starting to fall apart for him. 13-2 compared to a very calm 112.7 from Freik Schothos. And I was thinking that the Korps would have been more prepared. The fact that he missed the final round of the Iration World Championship Grand Prix Series to practice for this event. And clearly, it's not worked out for him. It's backfiring, and he's hoping that the calm and serene Freik Schothos runs into trouble, has a mistake, but right now, it looks impossible for that to happen. Schothos has looked fantastic all evening long. Yeah, as just by the way, Fennec Kern has been involved in a battle with um, Josh Thompson and others. You can just see that there on your ticker. Lifetime and scoring, by the way. If you still want to get it, it's available on racebot.tv forward slash timing. Keep up to date with all the action happening. Two drivers are classified officially as out this event. That is Talman and Govan Keeney there in the number 18 oh, machine. Go on, Paul. We've had an instant. David Pacelli going onto the pit straight and he just loses control as soon as he opens his DRS flap and goes into the pit wall there. And that's his race run. That is one of the weirdest moments I've seen in a while. Here's a replay then. Bocelli losing one, losing two positions. This one with Fernand Kern we were talking about and Joshua Watt Rogers. Opens that flap up and then he just, it seems to be he just lost all downforce there, Paul. Yeah, it's, it's really strange. And that's one of the things as well with this track. You know, if you're not careful when you open that uh, DRS flap, you, the back end can just look go because that DRS flap, that is, uh, that's losing you a ton of downforce. It's giving you that advantage of top speed because you've got less drag. But because you've got that less drag, you've not got enough much downforce. And when you're in right in behind, like he was behind those cars in front, he didn't, uh, he had all that dirty air effect on top of it. Let's go back and have a look at the number seven machine. In P number seven right now, that is Zoran Jonic versus the driver from Maurice Luna as they come down towards, uh, well, turn number eight right now. They've just gone through Ferrador and Kerber the Laringina. Ooh. They almost make contact there, Jake. They in fact, do. they do make contact. That's going to hurt Jonic a little bit now as they run from Pinheiro down into Bicca de Pato. My goodness me, and well, Zoran Jonic, he's been pushing all that long, and well, he's got to be really careful about that, that he doesn't just tw uh, twang that rear, well, that front wing, shall we say, and give that a bit of damage. It looks okay from my eyes on it right now, so he's got away with one, I think, but now look at Alex Sadler, look to try and recover in this event, heading through the left-hander, uh, that small little kink that opens up to the pit straight, and look at this, it's defensive lines taken then from Zoran Jonjic, and Sadler still tries around the outside, and will have have the inside or we'll try and have the inside for two no it won't happen but he might get the inside line from Kerber de Sol and get the advantage that way the issue is though that the number seven machine will have DRS enabled and Sadler is just a little bit too far back behind Josh Thompson is battling out with Michelle Lamoureux and Joshua Rogers as well versus Fernand Kern that is for P number 13 there Paul yeah, they, those two have been inseparable. It's uh, been the eternal fight between those two today after a various instance in this race. But Joshua Rogers getting the better run through Kerber de Sol now. Down towards the descent of the Lager, but he's not attacking. He's holding back for the time being. So I'm wondering if he's just waiting until later in the lap, maybe out of uh, Jun Chao to make that move. It's almost like a little bit of a skippy moment there. You know, wait until the last available opportunity to make the pass. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, Finnick Kern is, what, 11 and a half seconds behind the next Marat driver. And uh, there's not a lot of time left in this race at all, actually. So, uh, really, it's all about picking and choosing when you make your move just to get that, that spot, that final spot that you can realistically gain. Well, there's your top eight as it stands. It is Freight Shawhorse leading now by 4.3 seconds over down the core. Ilka Hapala in third place. Kazuki Imashima in fourth. Michael Partington in fifth place. Maurice Lona in sixth. John Jonik there in seventh. And Alex Sadler rounds out your top eight. We will stay on air, ladies and gentlemen, until the very end to make sure we give you confirmation of who will punch their ticket and be P number 10. Because here's the thing worth noting here, Jake. Going off camera a little bit, there have been other races over the course of this week. As it stands, the core has an advantage over Shawhorse. We've got to work out whether Shawhorse win here today will put him ahead of David Accor when you tally all the points together. 
where you have to average it. And that's the thing. If you do more than one race, you average it. And when things stood going to this, the final race of World's Fastest Gamer, you feel that the Corpse had a 40-point advantage, had things to work. But, of course, every single race, the point scoring method is a little bit different. It works on I rating and safety rating. This is probably the strongest field that you will see ra raced all week long. And everyone wants to be a part of it. So the difference in points here could add up to be massive between now and the end. And if the Corpse is P2 and wins it, and Shothos wins this race and still hasn't done enough, then that's the story that you talk about. The Corpse has done enough. We started the week and the difference was four points. We get ourselves to the final race, difference is a little bit more. Yeah, indeed. So, so Moritz Lerner right now is three times per second ahead of that number seven machine, John Jonik there from Central Eastern Europe. That is the biggest battle we have got going on in your top 10 as we work ourselves towards the end of this race, Paul. For Jonik, all he's got to do is really help that Orion Racing in terms of team pride, but that core sim racing car looks as though, sorry, that core motorsports car even, looks as though that it's got the power and the grunt to hold the challenge for the time being. It looks like he's set up just purely for the high-speed sections at the end of the lap and also down towards the centre de Lago. So that's what it looks like from Moritz Luna there. He seems to just hold everyone up through these uh, twisty sections as both cars. Little twitches there around the final corners they come now. And Luna just able to pull out that little bit. But now here comes the DRS and here comes that uh, car that... Orion car looking, but it's not close enough to make that move. So that's what makes me think that Moritz Lerner has set this car up with no downforce here. Okay, you're going to lose out in that middle sector, but you can't really make the moves through that middle sector. Yeah, as we look now back to Joshua Rogers, he closed up two tenths per second over Fernet Kern that last lap, battling for P number 13 right now as Rogers again gains a bit of time, but only three one hundredths of a second over Fernet Kern as they come through one and two, the center S into Curve de Sol, turn number three. Will Rogers get the run then on the overspeed for the DRS this time? He's gonna wait until the final lap. He gets the overspeed, can't do anything. But we are now onto the final lap of the final round of World's Fastest Gamer because there is Frank Shawhorse. We're going to go back because Rogers was right behind there. Alongside for a moment, Fernet Kern was not able to do anything. He has to stay in line for the time being. But we will take it now back to the driver of Frank Shawhorse. Shawhorse now has, get this, a 5.7 second advantage over David Decor. Decor probably realizes this race is over and done for him, but still, the championship points from this round and working it out all together, that one will be important. You can barely see David Decor in the shot. That is how big the gap is right now. But for the driver of Freight Shawhorse, he now is just a few corners away from gaining victory and maybe punching his ticket into World's Fastest Gamer. It literally is like 2008. We don't quite know yet who will punch their ticket, but Frank Shawhorse has done all he can do. He wins here at Interlagos, round number four of four in McLaren's Irie Sings World's Fastest Gamer qualification. Shawhorse wins, David Accor in second place. Dejected he is. Ilka Hapara comes home in third, and Kazuki Umashima rounds out your top four. P number five will go to the driver of third place in the championship heading in. So fourth place in the championship heading in. Michael oh. Partington, and go on, Paul. Josh Rogers, big moment at Ferradura. He's got together with Ferret Kern there. And Kern was just later onto the brakes than uh, Rogers, and Rogers has been sent around. Major damage to his car, and he's just struggling to get that car to the end. Game over for him, you would argue. As uh, so there you can see the replay for Joshua Rogers. For Freight Shawhorse, the question now is, Jake, we wait, we sit, we wonder. Is it enough for that driver of Freight Shawhorse? Well, that's the big question. Actually, I've just seen a very good bit of sportsmanship there from Ferenc Kern, letting back through Josh Rogers, heading towards Jun Sao. So I have to say Ferenc Kern doing well, but he is going to give it a drag race to the line and isn't going to finish ahead. But that's very, very good sportsmanship there from Ferenc Kern to let that position back after the contact. But it, it is still a little bit of a roll the dice and hope that the numbers add up and do enough. 
I think Frake's clean. I think he's done enough. That's the question, though, that everyone else will have to be asking here in the next few moments. We won't know yet, and I'm not sure how long it's going to be before we properly know. We will stay in there, however, until we give you an answer. Here's your results. Frake Shawhorse wins by 6.2 seconds over David the Core, then, in the final round of qualifications. Ilka Hapara in third place. Didn't talk much about him, but he did finish within 10 seconds just of your race leader. Kazuka Umashima in fourth. Michael Partington in fifth place. Maurice Lerner in sixth place. John Zonic there in P number seven. Alex Sadler in eighth. Carl Germinton in ninth place. And Richard Unno rounds out your top 10. There's the remainder of the results up on your screen. And Paul, a wacky race here today at Interlagos. But still, we've got one question left to answer. We'll find out that one in about four minutes time. Yeah, absolutely. We're uh, just waiting for official confirmation of that championship result. But it was a little bit of a race of attrition here today. Lots of instants, lots of close racing. But that's what Interlagos can bring you. A lot of close racing uh, with the slipstream there. So definitely we saw a good race here today. And I would say that would maybe just tip uh, tip this one uh, for when uh, compared to, say, the USA, the Grand Prix at uh, Kota that we had uh, that was a real good one, but I think this one's just tipped it for uh, excitement levels. But still, we have got to say that David Accor and Frank Shawhorse have been spectacular this season. You've got two teams, Team Redline. They are classified as one of the big three teams in all the sim racing, Jake. But for Orion Race Team to do what they have done this season, it shows that they, even though they have not been necessarily successful the last few years in the World Championship Grand Prix Series, they have still got the talent when they need it. Oh, absolutely. And you can't take anything away from Orion and the effort and the pressure that they have put on Redline that you would not have believed going into this event. If you thought that Frank Schothos was going to go in, you would have thought that he would be one of the favourites to win it hands up. But right now, you have to say that Frank Schothos, you know, he has had that brilliant event. We did say that he had struggled through the mid part of those races, the third race and the second race as well. It wasn't his best performances, but take nothing away from the work that David Corpse and Frank Schothos both have done because both of them are very much worthy winners, whoever it may be. Right, we haven't got the results in front of us yet, so this is speculation. Paul, who do you think has it? I would, I would think that Freak has just edged it, but it's going to be very close indeed. But I think just with that, that result here today, it'll just tip him over the edge. But it's just speculation, as you say, at this point. We are waiting for official classification of that uh, to come through. Uh, on our screens, but uh, definitely Freak, you've got to be impressed with the uh, determination that he's put in in these four weeks. I, I mentioned that uh, Kota race that we had earlier on, because you look at the determined moves that he made on Jamie Fluke in that one, it showed that he was absolutely on it and wanted this 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 title. Jake, what about you? Uh, I, I think it's Frakes as well, but uh, as you know, I, I, I don't have the points in front of me, so I can't necessarily tell who's got the points and who's got what at this stage. But, you know, Frake Shothors, you know, for all that he's done, he hasn't actually finished outside of the top two in its entirety of this campaign, basically. The Corpse has had a P3 with Jamie Fluke at round two, but... These two drivers have been at the front every single time, giving everything on the line. And there's two different approaches. Schothorst came through the Formula Renaults. He was one of those drivers that was a rookie heading into the Irishing World Championship this year. And being a third place overall in that championship as well, you can't ask for anything more which has happened in terms of that event. What you have to say right now, though, is that you get yourself in a situation with David de Corpse. Uh, he's he's done it through the Grand Prix series at times. He does race those races with everybody else. He does show people what a benchmark is. And I, I think it's brilliant. Both philosophies work and they've been a clash of ideals together. But I believe we may have just had the scores very soon coming through, as I've, I think I've just seen. Yeah, so we're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. Get this all confirmed. And when we come back, we'll announce who will be punching their ticket to McLaren's world's fastest gamer. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
We have confirmation. And again, we have to say that this is provisional because anything could happen tomorrow. But, Freight Shorthorst, for the time being, by 11 points, has punched his ticket to McLaren's world's fastest gamer over David Accor. Freight Shorthorst, 1,096 points. David Accor, 1,085. We must stress, Paul, these are provisional results and again the core and show horse both in theory have three more opportunities to try and get themselves into the field yeah there certainly are still opportunities for people but uh, you would think with the way that the races have been going that that is going to be how it finishes uh, here um, not everything has updated either so we won't be able to give you the full top five but definitely those two 11 points you've got to be heartbroken if you're David Acor because of the the effort that he put in and not just him but his team as well because it isn't just David that's done it um it's really tough to take that and when you've lost this final race by 6.2 seconds in the end it's, it's a tough pill to swallow but uh, it's certainly a good experience for him and the team but Frick again he hasn't done that on his own either the team redline have certainly got around him and to help him get into these finals yeah, and it's also worth noting, these are some fantastic stats here, Jake. David Accor, he has done four more races in terms of attempting to qualify over Freight Shorehorse. However, he has half the incident point, and he has led over two and a half times the laps over Freight Shorehorse. The core must be gutted. He has to be. He's shown that he's had most of the abilities, had the ability to lead from the front, have great starts, and... When you got an average finishing position, Will, of position number one in your races and you're still not champion, what more can you say? What more can you say about David Dickles and the works that he's put in? He's 11 points shy because when it's come to those big races, Freak has turned up and he's performed. And take no credit away from David Decor. He will hold his head up high after the effort that he's put himself in through. And I, I think everyone will respect David Decor a lot more than he was previously. Yeah, but you've also got to remember at the start of this motor race here today, we saw the fact that we had David Accord take the race lead away early, but then Frank Shawhorse, we're on board of him now. This is a replay of lap number one. Lost the race lead out of Curve of the Soul, got a huge advantage in towards the Saga de Lego. And we I talked about that one, Jake. I said, if it comes down to it, that is the pass we have to remember. That is the path we now have to remember. It is, and I, I wonder why the corpse didn't defend it, because he knew that Joe Thorst was always going to be close. There is slipstream that comes into play in the opening stages, not as much as DRS will ever help, but if you were David de Corps, and if I was a driver in that situation, of course I'm not David de Corps, but surely you would try and defend it into that corner, hoping to get a good run out. You see the effort that Joe Thorst done in qualifying, by all intents and purposes, Will, I would have gone, you are staying behind me by hook or by crook. Because at that stage, if they two came out of the motor race, well, actually, the core would have had the advantage. The core went wide there, down at turn number four, and he could not make it work from then on in this motor race. Here's a replay, actually, from on board with the driver of David Accor at the start of this motor race. Gets the early advantage. Moves himself to the race lead then over the driver of Frank Shawhorse. But then just look at Frank Shawhorse coming back. We need another camera angle for this one for you. But you can see it right about now. No defensive move made at all. And that allows the driver of Frank Shawhorse to go down to the inside. Push over the core wide and move himself to the top of the field there, Paul. Yeah, certainly, and I'll tell you what, uh, Shortos, you know, he was 
it was not giving Decor a lot of room in uh, the centre of the Lago as well. So definitely was aggressive, assertive, wanted that position and he wanted it straight away because he knew from qualifying that he had the pace of David Decor. And uh, I will point out as well, Frick, on the exit of Descendo de Lago actually changed up too many gears and had to change back down again. So he actually hampered himself on the exit of that corner and could have been under attack, but Decor just didn't quite have the acceleration out that corner after running onto the uh, AstroTurf. We have now got confirmation of your top five. Freight Shore Horse, 1,096 points, beats David Decor by 11 points then in your overall standings. Again, in theory, drivers can race tomorrow. In theory, this could change. However, we are now predicting that Freight Shore Horse will punch his ticket and move himself into the finals of McLaren's world's fastest gamer. David Decor in second place. Michael Partington then, third place, 900 points. Ilka Hapala with 818 points. And Don Jonic then in P number five with 778 points. Let's talk about Team Redline for a moment in terms of the final shake, what do they do now? Because they've got three drivers in that final. It depends on who they want to win, basically. And there's no team orders inside Team Red Line and Dom Dewan they will... Say. They say, and Dom Dewan will bat that about for a month for Sundays. But this is the thing that is very interesting about Team Red Line. And it's about who gets that seat and who has a reason to want it more than anyone else. You can argue that Frank Shothorst has done the work through the iRacing and qualified, deserves to get this shot. Bonner House has been a stalwart on R Factor 2, deserves to get that shot. Greg Ahuta, a five-time world champion in iRacing, deserves that shot. But this is the thing. I think this is Greg Ahutu's more than anybody else at this stage, mainly because of the fact that he's 38 years old right now and the fact that his career is coming towards an end. He is maybe starting to hit that decline. He missed a few rounds of the championship this year in the IRS World Championship Grand Prix Series. I think this is a great transition for Gregor Hutu to keep himself relevant, but also at the same time, transitioning into a different stage in his career where he doesn't have to be doing all those races to prove his worth because he's already proved the worth that he's shown already. But there's more than just Redline here at stake who can win this. There is, of course, nine other drivers that can go in, be it Harry Jacks, uh, be it David Hoke, be it the likes of Rudy Van Buren. You know, any one of those 10 drivers now has a shot, be it Isaac Price, be it whoever. They have that shot, and it's not as straightforward as someone's got this off the drop of a hat. You see, I'd argue differently, Paul. I'd actually say of the three drivers that Jake talked about, I'd give it to Shawhorst. I mean, yes, I know he's just won by the skin of his teeth, but we know how good and how respected Bonner House is. We know how good, how respected Gregor Hutu is. But Sure Horse is an up and coming talent. He's hungry. He's, he's, he's wanting this opportunity and he's, he's fought and straight for it throughout this series that we've shown here on these uh, consecutive Sunday nights. So we've seen how desperate he is and what he'll be willing to put on the line. He's got the pace. He's got some racecraft there as well. It depends on what McLaren specifically are looking for because it's not just going to be judged on well, who wins the final competition. There is an interview process involved in this as well. So really, it's all about now representing yourself the best that you can, bringing yourself forward in the best light, making sure that you're presentable, making sure that you, you know what you're talking about, can show how you've uh, been able to uh, work within a team and being able to improve setups uh, and, and all of that. So definitely, it's not just purely about the out and out racing now for these guys. If only knew these drivers knew that I teach a subject and just that. I'll say your classes negotiate fees with you on a one-by-one -one basis. But the thing is, actually, Jake, I want to talk about, in terms of the Orion race team, yes, they lost, but my word, this is the best I've seen Orion race team in five years of commentating on them. Exactly. And I think even though they've lost, they've gained a lot more by losing than they have by winning, because if they won, then they'd have all that pressure on them. Because they've lost, they don't have that world's fastest game of pressure anymore. They have the ability to switch off, concentrate, 
go for road to pro with some new drivers maybe think about getting some other drivers qualified again and then for next year they're fresh they're ready they're hungry they can go for it we know how good now the orion race team can be and if they can translate the results that they've had here into the iRacing world championship then my goodness orion will look even scarier back when they had mitchell de jong in their team and let's talk about um team Ra um, team radicals online as well actually because well paul we haven't much talked about them but Radicals Online, again, big championship setting, have turned up, they have done their best, and actually they've done a good job. Yeah, they've, they've done a very good job, and it was great to see uh, Kazuka finish fourth in this race as well. Look, okay, a little bit off of the, uh, the top three, but he had to fight for that as well. And when you've got Alex Sadler as well coming into there and uh, showing some good racing there, okay, made a couple of mistakes, but we've seen him throughout this year just been growing as a driver so uh, definitely at Sadler they've got a good a good driver there uh, and him as well so Radicals they're showing that you know they're still there they can still be one to fight for it and uh, you know it's not a one horse racing anything now it's really the competitive nature of, of sim racing especially in iRacing is just stepping up notch after notch each and every year well, that is all we've got time for, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being a part of McLaren's World's Fastest Gamer. These are the guys who get it done for us. From Will Vincent, I am Will Vincent, alongside Jake Sparry and Paul Smith. Thank you so much for being a part of our coverage over the last four weeks. We send Frank Shawhorst to the finals. As Redline do it once again, beating the Orion race team, 10 drivers, have now punched their ticket to McLaren's world's fastest gamers. What happens next? Game on.